live and direct. Live and direct, man. This is this is a real yeah. special moment, man. This is for hip hop. This is for the culture. Yes, man. Every Tuesday, when we're here for the reminisce yeah, show, right. man, where we connect, you know, the ancient traditions of Saint Kofa, you know, forget it, remembering what what we forgot, man, to go back and and collect to move forward. You know, and right here, you know, as always, man, you know, we're, we're here to preserve our culture, the foundations, you know, the, the history um, so that we can understand where we need to go. And we have a very, very special guest with us here, you know, um, just a, a legend, you know, um, a historian and someone who's like preserve hip hop culture. You know, I, I was just going through like my, my photo book right here, you know, of like the archives, you know, like the archives here and mm -hmm. it's incredible. Let's all do it. Let's all do it. All three of us. Yes. We Yo, all got you, it, you, to me, you ain't hip hop if you ain't got this book, man. You, you ain't hip hop. Right. You ain't hip hop if you don't have. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there we go, man. Come on. Come on. Yes. God yes. MC, man, right there. Yes. Oh, my God. Yo, Yo I, I, to continue off what you're saying, yes. Like, <laughs> I, I I like to see you, Ernie. I love. I like to say that you're the greatest hip hop documentarian, but also you documented the culture before hip hop even existed. Because mm. I uh, one thing that I love is you have this picture. Uh, you're the greatest photographer that ever hip hop has ever seen. You captured the whole history. But when I saw one of your pictures once, where you were right beside James Brown for like a oh. James Brown picture, and I was like, yo. If Ernie's been taking pictures since the James Brown days, this man is older than hip hop. Look at that. Ready, ready. Like <laughs> the funky, you heard the funky drum. Like, enough said. Bow down, respect your elder, the big red alarm clock, the truth speaker. Come on. Ernie Panicoli, the, 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 the OG, the first eye, the, the, the so many man. truths, you know? The, the the speaker, the power, the truth, the the teacher, yeah. the ego. Mm, My mm. God, I, we, we you know Ernie. It's like it's so much, so much. Ah, <laughs> we tend forever, man. Babies, man. Babies. Oh man, so baby faces, man. Like young, everybody's looking young yeah. in these photos, man. Like yeah. Ernie was there live on this on the scene, live in direct, man. Like. Video shoots, man. Everything, like, come on yeah, now, yeah. come Yo. on. Oh my god! Yo, this video shoot is the one that blew my mind. Yes, yes, man. We did that. We started that about five o'clock in the morning. But man. before there was hip hop, Bootsy, please come on. Yep. Before hip hop, before mm. nineteen seventy four. Before man. Cool Herc started, like hip hop, Cool Herc, man. yo, man, like, this is my this is my new book. Oh. It's coming in June. Oh, and it's going to be promoted by LL Cool J and Rock the Bells, and uh, I'm creating a whole new look. Come I'm on, making it like religion, man. It, yes. it is. Yes. It is, man. Yo, I, I, yes. man. I need to put in my pre-order from now. I need that signed copy. I need that, you know, my collection, man. Oh my gosh, man, that's incredible. I'm looking forward to that. I er think Ernie, Ernie, I'm so glad you said that because that really is the essence of our culture. I love to make the parallels between concerts and church because I'm like, yes. it's pretty much the same thing, yeah. Except, yeah. Yeah. except we can swear at a concert. But like, <laughs> that's the, like one of the only differences. Well, that the, yep. the, pa the pastor on the stage wait, is coming. Wait, 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 you swear in church too. True. In the literal sense of swear. That's right. Okay. That's right. And if you, I, I don't want to take you too far, but think about what I'm about to tell you. You know, I like to drop jewels. Drop. In the Christian Bible, at the very beginning, it said in the beginning, before they made the earth or the sky or the water or the planets or the universe, it said in the beginning was the word. Mm. And the word was God and the word was with God. Now, mm. I could never get past that. And then when I tried to get past it, it talked about 
there were, uh, you know, certain gods, there were certain uh, great men at that time, and they looked at the, the daughters of men and saw that they were fair and came unto them and created yeah. giants. I was like, yo. <laughs> and people would go, you know, I, whoa. Let's go back to the first paragraph. In the beginning was the word. Right. And word. the word was God, but now they freak it, and the word was with God. Damn. Mm. So now, hip-hop was supposedly founded on the word, okay, and and Rakim come call himself the God MC. You know, I could just go on for flowing like, shit, I'm just mm -hmm. like, you know. You, you said it, man. It is religion. It is. It is. Mm. It is spirituality. It is. It is. It, like to me, the hip hop is definitely like it's an argument, but I feel like hip hop, in some ways, has more positivity than the church. But you know, that's my own personal thing. Is all that man? <laughs> what we got Ernie. here? Is Ernie, man. let's Amen. go. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> let's go. Ernie, let's start there. Mm. Unfortunately, I don't have the picture right here, but I once went on his bus and he said, brother, I trust you and I love you and I want you to take a picture of me when I'm dead. Wow. And I said, wait a minute. He said, no. Take it now, so that way you'll know. And he he went like he was dead. I got the picture. And wow, uh, yeah, wow, wow. You have you have multiple pictures of him. It's so oh, yeah. amazing. <laughs> so well, um, so so let's just start there if we can. Like you you you've been story. around the energy of Earl Sin. Actually, actually. One thing that I keep saying, I keep, I write Saint DMX when I'm writing. Like I just to me, hit, DMX is like a hip hop saint to me. Mm. The man, you know, no no real preacher or, or pastor is perfect, and that's just like DMX. Man was a prayer. He was he was a a man a, a man of the Bible. He really believed, and you know, he, he did his best. He was authentic. So what, what was it like being in his energy? It was like that. Wow. Man, peace to Guru, man. And mm. Uh, mm. The, last time, the last time I saw him was like a month before he passed. He and I did a lecture together at some college in New York and wow. somebody filmed it and I'm trying to get them to, you know, at least let me see the video. Yeah. Uh, this is Biz and MC Light. MC Light. Yo, that's such a fun picture you wow. captured. Incredible, man. Incredible. And that's never been seen before. And then there's Pepper and Kid and Play. Oh, my God. Yeah. Magic. Yo, Curtis hey. Jackson, 50 Cent. Can youthful, man. Youthful. But uh, but brother man, can 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 you tell us the the first time you met? Oh my gosh, man, this guy's going in right now. Prodigy, prodigy, man, I I don't even know where to start right now. But but can you tell us that the first time you met DMX? Yeah, my right hand man, Manny Martinez. Uh, <laughs> damn, so we lost so many brothers, man. Yo. Peace we're going to get into that today. next, man, because, like... We're, we're going to talk about... We love... We want to talk about that, man, because, because yeah. But, yeah, uh, the first time you met X, what was that like? Well, the first time I met X, uh, I talked to the brother last night, and he said that we were at the Apollo and that uh, DMX was doing a show with Pun, and uh, Manny... Manny's a big street dude, so he's a graffiti artist, and uh, he also runs Champion in New York. And uh, he said, I want you to meet these brothers. 
uh, so uh, he he brought me to a room, and DMX was there with his two dogs, and the dogs were snarling at everybody. I walked up to them, and the dogs chilled. So I said, okay. And uh, Manny said, yeah, man, this cat, this is the real thing. So uh, Manny introduced me to Pun, which was kind of crazy, and to DMX. Now, when DMX was, you know, kind of cool, and Pun, on the other hand, because of my size, you know, his wife was there, and his wife was strapped. And I walked in the room, and me and Manny's bigger than me, so she just reached for shit. <laughs> and and I, I looked at her. I said, "It ain't like that, baby." And she says, "I'll be the judge of that." Oh, and, you know, she just sat there. She had she had a sweater over her hand, and you know, and me and Pun. Pun looked at me. I looked at Pun. I said, yeah, MF, you know, what's up? And, you know, we threw hands and, you know, he knew. You know, people know. You know, mm -hmm. if you're in the street, you ain't got to have encyclopedias and uh, this and that. You just know. And Pun knew. I knew. And then, you know, later me and his wife became best friends. But, uh, wow. yeah, that was the first time I met uh, Pun. And... X, but X X was on some other thing, man. Mm. X, X, you know, it, it was like, you know, you see sometimes cats get all swole up with ego. I'm the best. I'm the greatest. I'm the this. I'm the that. Mm -hmm. never, he was like, if you said that to him, he'd look at you like you were stupid. You know? mm. Yo, X, you the, <laughs> shut up. You know, but, but that's because he understood the spirit and he understood that you are only as great as what you give, not what you take, what you give. Mm. So you give good energy. Man, motherfuckers ask me, uh, Ernie, I, I saw you there. Uh, you, you, you brought a meeting together with the Bloods and the Crips. Uh, and, and, they said, yeah, but you wasn't afraid? I said, of what? Mm. Mm. <laughs> maybe, right? maybe if I knew what I was supposed to be afraid of, maybe I'd be afraid. You know, those are brothers. <laughs> and the reason those spirit. brothers are together is because the police and the government and the city and, and the authority figures were abusive to them. So the brothers got together and look it up historically. And, and there's a rule for anybody watching this, never bet against me. <laughs> Unless you got some extra money you want to throw away. All of these groups got together to protect their communities. Right. They knew a man walking down the street is going to get jacked. Ten men walking down the street ain't going to get jacked. And a hundred is going to be respected. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Where they went and how drugs got in and economics, that's another mathematics. I'm not... Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not here to judge nobody, but that's right. where that came from. So people say, you ain't afraid? I said, of what? <laughs> you know, Spirit. you walk. Kara said, when you walk, walk with authority. Tell the negative people, don't bother me. And you walk with that that sense and not with arrogance, you know, like, and not with fear. Mm -hmm. But you walk, you know, as though you understand that you just won beam of sunlight on this planet mm. right mm. and that you bring in light and then all of a sudden people how'd i go to canada and get love in all the provinces come on man we adopted man. you man I know, we, we, but you i did. didn't come with 14 publicists and, That's and, right. and press releases and posters i walked humbly i was like yo what's up man exactly. <laughs> hey, where, yeah. where they sell good coffee at you know yeah we, Man. Yo, you just you you just radiated hip hop, love and truth, man. And the real one saw it, and that's it. It's just it look is, at man. this man. Carries himself with self respect. He respects the real, real recognized real, and <laughs> boom. <laughs> wow. Who's How many of you know who that is? 
Pulp Fiction. Yo, that's Harvey Keitel? Yep. Wow. He looks so young. He was young. You got like every artist in their like younger states. I remember seeing well, photos that's of like what I was hanging with him. And here's somebody cooler, almost as cool as James Brown. Is was it Willie Nelson? Oh, oh wow. wow. Willie Nelson. Jeez. Crazy, crazy, man. You got everybody, man. Like so it's way beyond hip hop. It's Rock is Hollywood. I, I even saw like a photo of like like Whitney Houston with Biggie and Bobby Brown. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like the combinations are, are just in, insane, you know. And who else we got there? Oh my oh, god, yeah. I love that picture. Classic. Wow. Buster Rhymes when he still had dreads. <laughs> Incredible. <laughs> wow. Now, yeah. now I'm going to take you on some history. You know what they say? History should never be a mystery. That's John Trudell. He was one of the founders of the American Indian Movement. Dang, and wow. He was also one of the most profound poets, activists. He was like Rakim in Native Talk. And look him up, T-R-U-D-E-L-L. -L. Just mm. a powerful brother. And this brother mm -hmm. was one of the other brothers uh, Dennis Banks, who also formed the American Indian Movement, which mm. inspired the Black Panthers. So, wow, amazing! Did not know that man, that's incredible. Man, speaking of our our indigenous brothers, man, I want to shout out Grizz on the Grind, man. I see it in, in the in the comments. Oh, yeah. Grizz, 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 you know? my, Grizz. Grizz is my Grizz is my brother. Here you go. Yo, I just saw <laughs> gas. Oh wow, <laughs> yo, Ron Howard, is that Ron yeah. Howard? When he had wow. hair. Good little Ron Howard. And, Yo. And, and this fly chick, uh, Brooke Shields. Brooke Shields, look how young she, wow. She looks like Ernie's there, man. Like Ernie's in the mix, man. For this early. is crazy. The Reed early. brothers, Lou Reed and Vernon Reed from Black wow. Rock Coalition. Lou Reed wrote the song, Walk on the Wild Side. And Vernon Reed walked on the wild side. <laughs> <laughs> amazing, amazing. So, so for the thing about I, I like about you, Ernie, is it, it really feels like you you don't obviously just get a picture. You share your values with them. You share. You talk to the people. You 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 connect memories and stuff. Um, oh, well, that's who I am. Mm -hmm. I don't know. How, I don't know how to take a picture like. I'm going to take your picture, you know? <laughs> no, man, I need to. And I don't know if you know who the king of New York is. Yes, oh, Christopher wow. Walken. <laughs> wow, you, wow. Come, come meet me at the plaza. <laughs> he actually <laughs> said that shit to me. I was like, okay. Wow. And you want to see the baddest white man you ever seen in your life? In your okay. life. Yo, baddest. Nate, who's the baddest cat you know? The baddest. Forget about it. <laughs> oh, Forget yeah. about oh, it. Oh, man, you talking about? Uh, well, I, no. I, no. Not no. Tony? Not even. Nobody. Okay. Yo, is, that's not. Who is that? That's the baddest. White man in the whole world. School us. I, I, that's. I need to be schooled, man. I, I, I can't yeah. even. Ooh. Write it down. It looks like Al Pacino's father, but I don't know no. who is that. <laughs> Write it down. Consular. William Consular. William oh, Consular. William Consular. William Consular was the lawyer for the Chicago Eight. He was Malcolm X's lawyer. He was the what? lawyer for the Black Panther Party, and he would tell a judge to kiss his ass right there and dare him to to, to do anything. He was what? Eddie Shabazz's lawyer. He was the lawyer for the Nation of Islam. Wow. Wow. That, go. And he that. was the lawyer, and he was the lawyer for the American Indian Movement. And I'm going to tell you a dirty story about him. And this Please. is history. William Kunstler. 
one morning I'm walking and I'm minding my business and I got a young lady with me. It's early in the morning, about seven o'clock in the morning. And we're going to go get some breakfast. And he comes up to us and he looks at the woman and he's tall. He's big. He looks at the woman and he says, sister, I see who you're with. A man that I kept out of jail so many times for his activism, a man that I protected, a man who was a warrior. He says, but I feel sorry for you because the man has incurable syphilis. And and the girl broke down. She started crying. She, and this this cat wasn't smiling. But he, he owed me one because I had messed with him once on something. I had said something. And oh. I, said, I called him a jive ass. I said, you talk too much shit. And and the girl the girl standing there crying, and she she says he has incurable syphilis. Oh. <laughs> Yo, man. That's cold. And wait, she he said, and there's a federal warrant for a half million dollars on him right now, and you could be arrested. Oh for my god! Protecting him. And the girl's crying, and I, I said, do you know who this motherfucker is? She says, no. And I told her, and he apologized, and he's hugging me and laughing. I said, now I owe you one. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Oh, oh shit, my God. A... Yo, man. <laughs> that dude is something else. Now, who's Go. this? Who's this? Fight? Is that fight? I can't see. No, it's blurry. Man, it is never yeah. blurry. Your eyes are blurry. You're Did gonna you have to school it well. come with Jimmy Cliff. The regular oh. oh. is probably the best movie you ever seen in your life. Yes. Wow, Jimmy Cliff. Man, like you've captured like so many people man like it's it's incredible man like the legacy like when i th even think about some of the people that pass man like jam master j tupac like craig mag big pun prodigy odb left eye Aaliyah. like there's so many are like you were around these people wait a second yeah. let me explain something to you there are levels of cool mm. you don't just say i'm gonna be cool and you wear all kinds of flashy shit and and comb only half of your hair and get a tattoo of a dick on the side of your face. Cool is to the bone. Mm. Cool is how you come in a room and lower the temperature. Mm. Mm. No doubt. Ooh. <laughs> no doubt. Bootsy. Jeez. That is the essence of cool right there. That's a, that's mm. a musician's musician. <laughs> mm, mm. I thought that jazz musicians were the coolest people I ever met till I met Bootsy. Okay. Now I'm going to tell you a funny story about Bootsy. All right. Yeah, that's ill, man. That's the ill shot right there. I'm the Supreme Minister of Culture for the Universal Zulu Nation globally. And every Zulu. year we had a, a, an anniversary. And Bambada comes and he tells the, the young Puerto Rican dudes that are at the door that everybody got to get searched because, you know, there's people carrying weapons and doing dumb shit. And he said, everybody got to get searched. So me and Bam and Paradise from the X-Clan are standing there. We're talking. And and some of the X-Clan is there. And, you know, I mean, it, it, you know. And we look over, and these Puerto Rican kids are frisking Bootsy. So I grabbed my camera, and I got a picture of him. And every time they touched him, he started giggling like he was tickled. He said, whoa, whoa. <laughs> and Bam runs over. He said, what are you doing? They said, you said everybody's got to be frisked. He said, but that's Bootsy. He said, I don't know who the Bootsy is. <laughs> but, wow. Yeah. 
Wow. Brother, I could go on. Yo. Indeed, man. Yo, oh, you, wait, but the wait, thing wait, is. Wait, wait, here's somebody cooler than Bootsy. Oh, man. Oh, Here shit. Who could There's be levels, cooler? Than levels. Who? Levels, man. What level is higher than Bootsy, man? Wow, show us. Take us there. Oh. Wow. <laughs> Wow, on, yo, yeah. that, so that that's did you get to talk to him, the Dalai Lama? Wow. <laughs> He's looking super young too. Yeah, yeah. Man, wow. like and, but and it, it just shows that you're sexy to, who's sexy than Beyonce. Halle Berry, Rihanna, <laughs> uh Pam Greer. I say Pam Greer. Oh, okay. Yeah, but, Okay. Man, okay. If I tell you my Pam Greer story, you're going to be mad. But this yeah. sister, even Beyonce, ran in, over next to me and said, I want an autograph. Oh, Tina Come Turner. On, yes. Yes. Oh, wow. my God. I got to yeah. tell you my Pam Greer story. Okay, do Please. that. Let's, let's hear these. Uh, and then I'll tell you one. <laughs> like every reminisce. man in the world, you know, I appreciated Pam Greer. Mm -hmm. For a multitude of reasons. Mm -hmm. And one night, I get invited to this record party, and Guru runs up on me. And he said, Brother Ernie, he called me Uncle Ernie. He hugs me. He says, Joe, I need a favor. I said, but you can't get no favors from me. Whatever you want, you got. He yes. says, no, for real, for real, for real. And he grabs me by the arm, and I said, what are you doing? He said, just so... I go over there, there's Pam Greer. And Pam Greer knew who he was. And she gives him a hug. He said, Brother Ernie, get this picture. So I take my camera, and my camera freezes. No. Oh. I never heard freezes. your camera freezing. What? It Nothing happens. So, you know, I start playing with everything, turn it off, turn it on, take out the battery, do nothing. So she what? said, well, I got to go. She gives him a kiss on the cheek. And from that day to now, to, to the day he passed, he was still mad at me. <laughs> yeah. Man. Oh. And wait, wait, wait. You want to talk about cool? And and this, he, he saw the girl that I was with uh, at an event, and he says, damn, you look familiar. She says, so do you. Uh, wait a minute. That, so that's Billy D. Williams and and a, and a Diana Ross wannabe look-alike model. Wow. Hey, okay. <laughs> man, the OG, yo, like no, no, man. he's not the OG. I got a picture of the OG. Just so you all, motherfuckers, know. <laughs> I came. I've been there for a minute. Here's the like most OG cat that you will ever see in your life. Even even Bootsy had to give him a dap. Is that Frank Sinatra? Wait. Yep. Sinatra. No. Wow, Frank you got a Sinatra. you got a personal picture of Frank Sinatra. No, I got fifty pictures of Sinatra. What? Fifty? You said. Come well, on. What was man. he like? What was he like being around his energy? I I had no. We have no idea. Like. The smooth cat right there. No, he was just like I got so many pictures of him, it's insane. And uh <laughs> I could tell you stories, but I'm not going to. Uh yeah. come on. I just yeah, like this show. <laughs> I mean Eddie <laughs> Wow and Arsenio, amazing. Yo, I just want to ask, is there some moments where you're around and even though people trust you, they're like, where you know it's like, yo, I better not take a picture. There's, there's, there's just too much realness going on. And is there some times where you just kind of, you even choose to put your camera down? Yeah. Oh, yes. cool. there oh. we go. Mm. Wait, so that's Whitney. Oh, no. Oh. No. Oh. No way! Whitney and Michael, come on! And and Quincy, and you have Quincy. a picture with Quincy, Whitney, and Michael together. 
Wow. Oh, Yo, that my picture, God. That picture needs – that's worth more than the Mona Lisa, man. What? <laughs> man, you're just like – Oh. Where where was that? Where was that? Where did you get that picture? Like you they were gave, all, you were. They gave. They gave. Uh, they gave uh, Michael some honorary PhD or some shit, and uh, Quincy called me and invited me. Wow! Wow! Yo, man! Holy and, shit. Andy Warhol. And yeah, I was like, yo, that's an art dude, Andy Warhol. Oh, Come on, man. Mr. Saturday Night Fever. Wow, John Tra baby John Travolta. Baby John Travolta, man. <laughs> is that Stamos? Oh no, who is that? John oh. Kennedy Jr. John, John Kennedy Jr. Jr. Had killed him. <sighs> man. Like so <laughs> Yo, man. So, do you do you feel like the circles move different? Like Hollywood people are a little different than political people or hip hop people, or do they feel? Do they kind of all feel the same at a certain point? No, it's it's individual people, and you know, like I'll tell you a funny story about Frank Sinatra. One of, one of my funny stories. Okay. I knew he was going to be at a certain place. And a certain time because he always showed up 15 minutes before showtime. Mm. Not an hour, not two hours, not five minutes, not late. He showed up on time. And I go up there and they got these gorillas, guys with necks as big as my thighs. <laughs> Guidos. Yeah. Where you going? <laughs> wow. and Everybody's intimidated because these cats, you know, they're, they're just like gorillas. Wow. And I walk up and I got my camera and I said, excuse me? He says, no excuse. Where are you going? I said, I'm taking pictures of Mrs. Snow. No. You know, I said, wait a minute. No. I said, wait. He asked me to be here. Now, you, he hired you. His people hired you. And you're gonna piss him off and not let me get my pictures? I said, let me let me call him now. And of course, nobody had cell phones back then. Mm. I said, I'm gonna go call him now and tell him that you won't allow me to do my job. And they look at each other. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> and I walked past him, and these look like football players. You know, I said, damn, you better hope. To <laughs> and and I got I got a ton of pictures of him. Uh, time after time, because I was persistent, and these cats were so afraid of him, but they were like, he was like a king. Oh, talk about cool. I like cool. Cool <laughs> is something you can't pretend. You can't mm. pretend to be cool. It's like pretending to be tall, or, you know, right. <laughs> pretending to be black. You can't, you yeah, know. Right. Okay. You can't do it. Now, you got the Dalai Lama, you got Bootsy. You got James Brown. Come on. Frank Sinatra. Come on. <laughs> Prince, I was waiting for it. Yo. Prince, I was waiting to ask yes. about Prince. You, you had Michael, so of course you have to have Prince. Wow. And Do you Prince say any Andrew. words to Prince? Yes. Oh, oh, shit. Oh. oh it just shit. keeps going nonstop. The greatest. Out. King Ali. Big brother Muhammad Ali. Wow. Is that Johnny yeah. Depp? Yep. Wow. 21 jump Wow, that's like nah, exactly. That's like 21 year old Johnny Depp. Wow. Dennis Hopper. You have Dennis any Prince Hopper. stories though? Huh? Prince, man. We, we want to yeah, hear I about Prince. A lot of Prince stories. Michael like Jackson, Prince. Isaac Hayes. Uh, no, that's Michael know. Jordan. Sorry. Jordan. Michael Jordan. Jordan, Isaac Hayes. Yeah, yeah. 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 Damn, and man. Andy. Macaulay Culkin, peace to his new baby. And no, that's, that's, that's uh, that's uh, wait, Kid Rock, Kid Rock. Oh yeah. my god, yeah, he does look like Macaulay though in that shot. <laughs> wow, wow, man. but tell us about Prince though, man. Because like Prince spent some time in Toronto, like he had, he had his house out here and whatnot. Mm -hmm. Man, wow. 
See, so yeah, when we say yeah. historian, we we mean that. <laughs> did, you, did you get? Did you did you say a word to Prince? Did you get a moment with him? Yeah, I got a lot of moments with him, but I got somebody even cooler than Prince. Oh, Holy oh. shit! Wow, please. James wow, Baldwin. you're James you're the Baldwin. first person that I've known that met James Baldwin. Wow, James Baldwin. Ah, James I not James only met a billionaire. <laughs> wait, I not only met James Baldwin. I hung out with him, and he taught me a lot. What did he teach you? True. Could could you pass on a lesson to us? Because that's one of the greatest writers of all time, greatest of all time, American man. thinkers to ever. Please let's, let's let's give some space for for James Baldwin. What? Yeah. What What did he say to you? Well, the first time I met him, uh, we were at some award show and all the press were running after this one and that one. And I was like, I don't run for nobody. And I went up to him. I said, Mr. Baldwin, can I take your picture? He said, with all these celebrities, I said, all these celebrities are going to be gone in a year or two years. I said, your writings are going to be here forever. He said, thank you. That's very respectful. I said, well, I'm not good at flattery. I'm not good at respectful. I'm only good at what I know. And we talked. We talked for an hour. He gave me his phone numbers. And he called me several times to have dinner with me. I called him. Each time I called him, he was getting ready to go to Europe. Each time he called me, I was knee deep in studio shoots. But we talked on the phone. And he had what Minister Farrakhan has what Khalid Muhammad has. He has what uh, even William Kunstler, the crazy ass lawyer had. He had a wicked sense of humor. Okay. But, you know, even uh, George Clinton, it's obvious he has a sense of humor when he did Atomic Dog. Why do I chase the cat? Why do I act like that? Is there nothing but the dog, the in, dog me? in me? I don't like nobody without a sense of humor. Mm. I, I'm not, I don't trust them. Because I, I think they're hiding something. To me, right. if you you know, if you can't laugh at yourself or laugh at the human condition, something's wrong. Yeah. And, uh, we we talked a lot, and unfortunately, he said, "Let's make a deal. When I come back from France, you know, we'll have dinner and we talk." I said, "Okay, any place special?" He said, "Yeah." He told me the name of place. I said, "Why that place?" He said, because my brother owns it, we won't have to pay. <laughs> ah. <laughs> Simple and plain, man. Yeah, his brother owns the sweet water. Jokes, jokes. No, he was serious. Yeah, he wasn't man. joking. You know, none of us were getting paid like that back then. And uh, getting back to Prince, I spent a day with him. And for about a week, I had a headache because he would say shit that he had a different way of looking at things. Mm. Not a better way, a worse way, a smarter way, but he had a different way of looking at things. I think he looked at things uh, the way musicians look at music. Mm. And for example, I asked him, I said, other than your music, in hip hop, who is your favorite group? And why? And he laughed. He said, the cats you did four album covers for. I said, how do you know that? He said, I get paid to know that. And he laughed at me because it was public enemy. I was going to say public oh. enemy. I said, why? I mean, it's obvious why, but he had a different answer. Mm. He said, because with my sound equipment at Paisley Park, I have sound equipment where you can hear incredible things. He said, every time I play a Public Enemy album, I hear something different than the time before. He said, you could hear a baby crying. You can hear a chicken. You can hear a train. You can hear an explosion. You can hear a gunshot. He said, there's so many layers that they've incorporated. He said, that's why I love Public Enemy. Wow. Um, and then he said, you put a message on top of that? And you put fearless on top of that, he said, That's why I love public enemy. And that's mm. just one, yeah, levels, levels, levels. And, mm. you know, I, I think in a way he liked being around people, but at the same time, uh, his, his legend had got 
really big. And, and people thought he was egotistical. It wasn't. It was just that he had this big aura and everybody was intimidated by him. Oh, it's Prince. He, he liked people just to, you know, talk to him rather than, you know, like do an interview. People would talk to him in interview style. You know, it's like right. people talk to Rakim because, you know, whatever Rakim says, you're going to write down. I talk to Rakim like I'm talking to Rakim. Mm-hmm. You know, like I'm doing like an interview, but I, you know, I'm going to go back and, and publicize whatever he said. Mm. But Rakim, the Dalai Lama, Frank Sinatra, Prince. Those some, mother- some cool motherfuckers. They, uh, they I- all, you know, and, and William Kunstler with his bullshit, <laughs> he passed and, you know, he was a beautiful cat because uh, he was fearless. And not only was he fearless, he looked at the law as a way, as a tool of liberation rather mm. than, you know, a way to make money or a way to win or lose or any of that shit. He was beyond that. And mm. he saw it as a tool of liberation. And when you represent the nation of Islam, uh, Miles Davis, uh, all these fucking people, you know, mm. you've got to be, you know, it, it's just like, damn. The Black Panther Party, Huey Newton. Come on, that's that's some props. That's that's on some next level shit. But that, the real uh, OGs. Yeah, but yep. look up John Trudell, T R U D E L L. Yeah, definitely. We, we everybody, anybody who ever watches oh. an Ernie interview or see you speak needs to go do some homework on something. Yeah. That and John Trudell, John Trudell was a friend, but he was also an activist, he was also a warrior, he was also a poet, he was also a musician. If you get his albums, you'll be blown away. Mm. And his poetry, just his whole vibe. And, you know, the FBI hounded him and killed his family, killed his wife, his daughter, his, his daughters and his mother-in-law and all this shit. I mean, this, this the FBI hated him. Mm. He said, look at me. I'm a little skinny Indian. I don't have three dollars in my pocket. Why would they be afraid of me? And then he said, "Why they're afraid of him? Because yeah. he had clarity of thought." Yeah, yeah, knowledge okay. of self. Yeah, yeah you know, they, got, they got five thousand nuclear weapons. He's like, "Fuck! I don't even have a pocket knife. <laughs> I don't even have me carry a pocket knife." Mm-hmm. And wow. He also played in Thunderheart. He played in, in a lot of movies. He was an actor and he was profound and he was a poet. And you listen to his music, you'd be blown away. Also, in England, there's a brother that everybody sleeps on. His name is Akala. A K A L A. L A. Akala is the best. Mm. Okay. Look up Fire in the Booth. And he does oh, like seven okay. minutes. Non fire of fire. intelligence, brilliant, brilliant poetry. Wow. He came here. I saw him at City Hall. He came here once, and I was wow. like, I'm seeing Akala. I saw him, and he's one of the greatest thinkers in all of hip hop history. And unfortunately, he gets slept on because he's from England, but he's yeah. uh, he's great, he's greatness. John Trudell is the Akala of native people. Mm, okay. Wow. Okay. <laughs> That's some homework he, here, man. He breaks shit down. And uh, there's a documentary. I did a documentary. He did a documentary. We were even in the Navy together. And mm-hmm. uh, he did a book. I did a book. Uh, this brother is on some. Uh, also, go to YouTube. There's a bunch of videos of him. But you got to look up uh, the John Trudell documentary. Mm. Uh, you'll see, Indeed. you know. Uh, Okay, we're gonna <laughs> yo is anybody typing? I don't even know, man. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I actually we there, I want to shout out some of the commenters in in one minute, but just quickly before we do that, you you you're talking about documentaries and you've shown us way more celebrity like Hollywood people than I thought. I'm like, yo, this guy yeah. captures hip hop history and Hollywood history. So I just wanted I, to know what's... like did, did you see that movie, um, Judas and the Black Messiah? You, no. you were talking about that. 
No, the reason I didn't see it is because I was there and I was made an honorary member of the Panthers. And even to this day, some of my best friends are original Panthers. And it's difficult for me. I couldn't even watch the Biggie documentary because I had spent so much time. When you spend time with a brother or a sister, it's hard to watch. Mm. When you're in war, it's hard to watch a war movie. If you're in a gang, it's hard for you to watch a gang movie. Mm. You know, right. So, you know, that's just... Uh, yeah, that's just that's, that's just that's real. That that kind of re reminds of um of like um uh, Malcolm X, you know. Cause I know that you spent time with Malcolm X as well. Yeah. Wow, who is that? That's not. Oh, is that a, a native indigenous? I I can't. <laughs> I, <laughs> native indigenous. See, that's no, and, and it's, sorry, just indigenous uh, a native. I. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, so I here's, good, John Tr here's John Trudell again. Okay. Man. And for Yo, me what to an say, amazing brother. And for me to say he's a major influence on my life and my ability to translate information into art. Man. Mm. Mm. So, Incredible. so you were you were in the army. You yeah. you worked for the city I never, for a bit. I was never in the army. Never in the, the army. Navy, oh, yeah, the, no, Navy. the Navy. No, sorry. sorry. I, I I meant the military. But but you've served in the military. You worked for the city a bit, but you've spent most of your life as a photographer. And I was wondering if you didn't do those jobs, what other path would you have liked to explore? If if one that mm. one that you didn't get to explore, is there anything out there? <laughs> they say it's better to show than to tell. Okay. Okay. We got some exclusive here. Let, let, let's see. Let's see what we got, man. I, I I had to, you know, if Ernie wasn't a photographer, what would he be? What would he be? Let's see. What I still want to be. Oh, a painter! Wow. Ah. What a blessing. Okay. Ah. Hey, what's up, man? You would be like a Picasso. Like a yeah. All right, all right. Amazing. Thank you for showing that. Mm, mm, mm. <laughs> yes, man. Man of many, many talents, man. Well, there's another part to that, and that's the fact that if you look at my work, my photography, they look like paintings. Mm-hmm. Yes. Baby, baby. Wow. baby. Christ Christopher Wallace. Mm. Wow. Man. Christopher Rios. Wow. Man. Who was that in the middle? Brown. Bobby Brown. Bobby oh. Brown, yes. Wow. Man, I'm just thinking about just the energy being around like these amazing peoples, man. Brother Ernie, like, can you please share like a Malcolm X story with us, though? Sure. Yes. <laughs> like... <laughs> Wow. Like Ernie has met all of my idols. <laughs> Been with Everyone. all of my idols. Wow. Incredible, yo. Mm. Yes, man. The people need to know your connection to Malcolm X, yo. Yeah, that's 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 a golden one. That's that's complicated. And just so you know. Man. Whoa, some punk rock? Wow. Come on now. I did a book on punk rock. You did? Yeah. Really? What's it called? It's called Punk Life. Punk okay. Life. I, I didn't know that. Punk Life. I might have okay. to get a copy of that, man. Yeah, you can look it up. Okay, okay. I mean, punk and hip-hop are kind of cousins, you know. Indeed, Plus indeed. Cousins. Damn. Yeah, what else we got, man? We got six. Anyway. <laughs> man. Ernie, man. you It's just endless history and just brilliance with you. Endless lessons. Endless. I, I'm just so well, grateful. What, 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 what's, compli what's complicated about the Malcolm X? Like, 
I, I, I would love to know. Like Malcolm is okay. my all time favorite man that ever lived and breathed pretty much. Well, so see, there's a problem with Malcolm X. And the problem is I never met Malcolm X because the week that they killed him, the day that they killed him, they put me into the military. So I what? never met him. He, I was 18 the day he died. I turned 18 uh, the Holy week he shit. died. And fast forward, I, I studied him. I read everything that he wrote. I watched his speeches and I was, I never had a father. So he became a father figure for me. And he became one of the things in his books and his talks was being on time because it shows respect for the son and it shows respect for the person you're going to meet. Mm. And most people in hip hop and the arts figure, you know, I could bounce in whenever and back. But one day I was at the Apollo and this brother comes up to me from a group called Too Black, Too Strong. Mm. Okay. And he said, Malcolm's family wants to meet you. Wow. And I was like, are you serious? He said, yeah, his daughter wants to meet I said, why would she want to meet me? And he said, because she said that other than your fa her father, no man ever resonated with her, with the truth and the power that you did. So, of course... I met with her, I met with the family, I photographed the family, I became like a, a, a godfather to her son, Malik. Wow. And I was with the children and I was with them. And when her mother was killed, they asked me to go to the funeral and to be an anchor so that they could have somebody to hold on to. So I went to the funeral and one of the brothers, uh, Muhammad, he took a picture of me by the grave. And the irony is that at the grave, they buried her on top of Malcolm. And it was the same imam that was doing the, the, the ritual. And I realized then that the power of truth, the power of spirit, the power of energy, I'm standing there at the grave, over the grave of Malcolm that they had opened up to, you know, bury or inter his wife. And a strange thing happened to me that day because before we went to the funeral or the, the actual burial, we went to the mosque the biggest mosque in New York City. And we get there, the women go upstairs, the men downstairs, and there was no more room. But they knew who I was, they knew I was with the family. So they get a, a folding chair and they put me next to Muhammad Ali. And Whoa. when I was in the Navy, I wanted to box Muhammad Ali. <laughs> as stupid as that sounds, he was my hero. Mm. So I sit next to him, I said, peace brother, he said, peace. And I felt really blessed. And then they put another chair on my right. Muhammad's on my left. They put another chair on my right. And they put Giuliani, who was the mayor of New York, the most racist shit piece of uh, excrement in the whole planet. They put him next. And I'm sitting there and I'm thinking of that cartoon with the man with the two devils. The yes, devil devil and, the angel. Devil. and here on my left is Muhammad Ali. And here on my right, is the devil, the dumbass. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Booty and, Yeah, so, you know, that's... Man, there's so many stories I could tell you about Malcolm and his family and mm. uh, the effect and the influence and the, the, the loss that this man... And I, I don't think that we understand how deep that loss is. And I hated the X movie because we went and his daughter was supposed to interview Denzel and they wouldn't let her because they knew her questions would be real. And 
Uh, yeah. They wouldn't even let me take a picture there. They were real shit with us. And I hated the movie, not only because of that, but at the end, they didn't tell you who killed them. They, they put this on the nation rather than put it on, you know, the, the international global elites who understood the danger that he presented with mm -hmm. his clarity and his spirit. Also, I hated the movie that everybody, um, the book that everybody loved, the autobiography. If you read, you'll see in the, in the addendum, I'm a writer. Alex Haley admits that he sold Malcolm out. He says it in the fucking book, and nobody took time to read the book. And, and to read the part of the book where he says, uh, a foundation in New York reached out to me and, and brought me to New York to talk about Malcolm, Malcolm's uh, finances and so on and so forth. He didn't mention, he didn't have the balls to mention who that organization was. Wow. And he didn't have the balls to, to, to talk about who brought him up there. And he didn't have the balls to say no. If you ask me, uh, yo, come come to Toronto and talk about Logic's business or, or, you know, my brother Mindbender, talk about their money, I'd be like, kiss my ass. Mm. Anything I know is goes to the grave with me. Step aside. <laughs> but if you if you read the autobiography in there, you'll see that he admits that he did this. This is not my word. Look at the book, and nobody okay. took time to read. You got to read. It's like mm. who, who who did the song? Uh, I think it was uh, Jizzer. He said the labels. You got to read the labels. <laughs> read the labels. Read the say labels. it loud. Yep. Right. Classic. And he breaks it all down. He breaks it all down. He breaks mm. it all down. You got to read the labels. If you're going to read something, read it. In my book, there's... In, in this book, this is a dope book. Dope photographs, everything. But at the very end of the book, a sister... <laughs> this is hip-hop at the end of the world. At the end of the book, a sister, Jessica Care Moore, she did a poem. And the poem is called Pulling the Trigger. And she said, in the beginning was the word poets with no mics, no radio, no hypes, no magazines, no rappers with hooks that sing. The verse was the truth and the meaning of all things. He was born in between Brooklyn and Cree, armed with lenses, cameras, and shoulder strap. He saw the history and importance of the boom bap, captured mm. the spirit of the sound inside his lens cap. What he shot would shock the world with its relevance. He understood the beauty of the crime. He brought the evidence. His foresight brought the news of future royalty. But the world stage didn't realize just how this would come to be. Birth of a nation with no manners, just griots who broke bread and beat. The word unleashed blasted through neighborhood speakers. The church rocked, shell top sneakers. And and she goes on, and Man, nobody even understood. reads this. And nobody even reads this. This is the blessing that that I made sure was in the book called "Pulling the Trigger." And she ends it, and she made me cry. She says, "Ernie understood." She said, "I don't know what the others will do when the earth cracks in two, or the sun falling gets too close, when the oceans, tornadoes, volcanoes, hurricanes, and rainforests come for revenge." as we sip our morning paper and read our premium coffee, when our addiction to nothing finally goes away. Mm. But I know you'll be there shooting our pain, explore, exposing our possibilities, loving our glory, explaining our expressions, our peace signs, our war chants, our subtleties in black and white, our complexities in full color. Maybe it's your mother's love that saved you or the library that empowered you or living on the streets in New York City that propels you to keep shooting us from a pure spiritual perspective to honestly love what you were shooting right before you decided to pull the trigger. I shot you. You got to read this poem. Jessica Care More. She's one of the baddest women in the world, and she's from Detroit. And okay. her and Talib Kweli, they get together and, uh, you know, they have a podcast and a bunch of stuff. Oh, that's who Kweli does the podcast with. Okay. Yeah, that's what's yeah. Up. yeah. So, you know, I'm, 
Yeah. Well, I yeah. turned 74 last month. 74. 74. Yo, man, like, salute. 74. My man, your mic's on mute, just, just in case you know. Your 74, the, wow. Man, that's a blessing, man. Give thanks and praise, man. We're so grateful for you, brother. Thank you anybody so here? Much. Anybody? I can't see the. I can't see the, the chat. So, yo, Wasun, Wasun is in the chat. Wasun, oh, show some Wasun, love. Yo. Yeah, uh, shout out my brother Wasun. Colleen is here. Kwame, Donda, or Donna. Sorry, Donda Dawson. Yes, yes, yes. peace, Donna. Ca uh, Colleen you. says, Colleen you says, said happy Grizz. birthday. You said Grizz is here. Mm -hmm. Yes, man. Big up to Grizz, man. Grizz on the grind. <laughs> That's the homie I mean, right I saw, there. I saw gas. I saw gas last week. Another another native. That brother's okay. cool. Oh uh, yeah, I can't see the chat. I don't know how to see the chat for you. Yes, yeah. All this tech. What John Trudell called techno logic. <laughs> techno <laughs> technical, but no logic. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Hey man, that's hilarious. Hey, love, love, love is the highest technology, anyway. So. Mm -hmm. You, you you always function on love and truth, so everything else is just trying to be what love connects. So, brother, mm -hmm. brother Nasser sure Nolan that. did this. It's a portrait of me in glass, and I have my hands like this. So he did mm -hmm. that, and uh, more mathematics. Mm. Oh man! So so Ernie. We we're so I'm so happy I we've met in Toronto many times you you've been to, to places in Canada I even got to see you in Jersey when you got a picture of me when we were both at Rock the Bells which is amazing okay. I, you, that that proved I'm like this man has got the eye the vision of a literal eagle he could see thousands of people and just pick them out and like. You got me in that crowd, but it was legendary with Wu Tang and Tribe Called Quest. Slick Rick mm. was there. KRA. It was a great day to see you there in Jersey. But I mean, I just wanted to know. So, where's a place in the world that you haven't been yet that you want to go? Because I got a lot. I got. I haven't seen all fifty states. I know Logic. We haven't seen. Mm. We we want to go more. What what what's next for you when when traveling can happen? I, I don't want to break any of your bubbles, brother. But. A, a brother much blacker, much smarter than me, years ago told us, and you must have been sleeping. It's not where you're at. It's not, it's not where you're from. It's where you're at. It's where you're at. Uh, uh, you know, all right. All right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, wherever you go, you're bringing your vibe with you. All right. You know, all right. Let me, let me show you something. I'm going to blow your mind. Like, uh, man. Uh, again? <laughs> Like again, again? <laughs> yo, man! Photos of like Prince, like Frank Sinatra, like God, MJ, like it, it, holy man! The presence yo, of greatness. that picture of Quincy Jones, MJ, <laughs> and Whitney Houston. I'm, I'm. That's, I'm, I'm done. I'm done. That's Russell. Oh my it's God! That's my, that's my king. That's my king, ODB. ODB, man. A song unique. Shout out to Susie and yeah, Yo. Yo, in, Yo, in, China, in China, somebody made some shirts, knockoffs of my pictures, and uh, they sent me that, and it blew my mind. I mean, if you see a brother walking down the street with ODB on his shirt, then you know. <laughs> and not only that, but he's on one of them old, old cell phones. Oh, cell phones, yeah. Them, them the, brick the back, man. <laughs> the antenna, yo, the flip. Oh my gosh! Wow, man. So, can, can you tell us some like an ODB story real quick? Yeah, I'll tell you a story, a ODB story. Uh, man, I got about a thousand stories of the Wu Tang. Uh, oh, I met them before I even know who the fuck they was. Uh, <laughs> I met them because. I used to own a video store where I used to rent videos. And there was a place on 43rd, just west of 8th Street, a little shop owned by this brother, uh, a stocky brother, real dark skin and real, real loud, you know. And he had like a thousand karate movies. And I would buy them from my store. And the Wu Tang was always in there buying shit. So I didn't even know who they were. I just knew they were loud like him. 
and you couldn't go into a fucking store and buy a product. You couldn't do it. You couldn't go in and buy a, 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 a tape or, or a DVD or whatever. You couldn't do it. He wouldn't let you. You go in, you, you have, a, you know, $300, you want to buy a bunch. He says, sit down, man, relax. And he talked to you for an hour and a half and blow your mind. And he knew about the Run Run Shore and all them. He's a black man from Brooklyn, from bed and he knew more about Chinese movies. And the Wu-Tang right. stayed in there. And I, I got so many stories, man. I remember messing with... We want, with, we want them. I, I remember messing with, with uh, Rizzo when he was still Prince Rakim. I got a picture of him. And Jizza when he was the genius. Okay. Yeah, that's Bob, that's... Uh, what's that? That's... Uh, Bobby Digital. Uh, Bobby, Bobby Digital. Bobby, Bobby. Digi, digi, digi. My favorite, my favorite Wu Tang record of all time had to be Liquid Swords. Yes, but that came from that score because in there we saw, uh, you know, the, the baby cart. You know, the dude pushing the baby cart. Right. And I still got all those videos, and <laughs> and that's where I met them. And not only that, I tell you another crazy story about the Wu Tang. And then I'll tell you a story about Dirty. Yes. Uh, Wu-Tang, this bunch of Russian gangsters comes up to me, right? Yeah, that's that's uh, genius. Yeah, that's, that's genius. That's not even yeah. Jizzy yet. Yeah, that's true? Yeah. yeah. Uh, oh, sorry to interrupt. I yeah, want to hear every word. This bunch of Russian gangsters, you know, comes up to me on the street. <laughs> and, you know, four or five of them were standing around me. And one of them, I know he knows what he's doing because he just, you know, and the rest, you know, they're big, but they, they go down real quick, you know, because right. my hands. But this one cat, so I knew who to stay furthest away from. Anyway, they come, they said, we got to talk to you. So I said, talk, motherfucker, you know. Mm -hmm. I'm like, I'm playing it off. And they said, yeah. well, let's go in here. So we're going to this uh, restaurant. They order some food. I order a coffee. And they said, uh, we know who you are. I said, well, that's good. I don't know who you are. So they told me who they was. And there were a bunch of cats. This is the fun. This this is history. They left Russia because as Jews, they were persecuted for their religion. But wasn't a one of them was Jewish. <laughs> that was the game to come into the country they get a grant from the government, and you know, they were oh, pimping. So shit. anyway, yeah, that's that's the scam. Wow. And, hey. you know, it's not to say the Jews weren't uh, persecuted there; they were, but the yeah. cats, most of the cats that came here were gangsters who knew that as a scam. So anyway, they come, and I'm sitting there. I said, who are these motherfuckers? So anyway, I'm sitting there, and I'm like, who the fuck is these cats? You know, because I'm pretty good. You know, I know people. I know who knows who. And, and these cats, I didn't recognize. So I said, okay, tell me your game. And my heart was pumping, but I was cool. You know, I was like, all right, whatever. Mm -hmm. What's up? So they said, well, we we are filmmakers. I said, well, that's exciting. <laughs> okay. <laughs> said, and we're going to be doing commercials. I said, what kind of commercials? They said, you know, products, this and that. And we want access to hip hop because that's where the market is. I said, so what's that got to do with me? They said, well, we know you don't have a studio now and you rent studios. I said, yeah, that's true. Because back then I was renting studios, two, three, four hundred dollars, a thousand dollars a day, and you have a studio. They said, we got a huge studio, it's an entire floor. They said you can use it 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and we got a green screen. We got lights. We got cameras. You ain't got to do a goddamn thing except, you know, bring artists there. And when the artists come, you introduce us to their management. We ain't going to deal with the artists because most of them don't know, you know, two and two is four. So I said, okay. So I said, let me check it out. So I go, there's this huge place, man. And I said, I can work here. He said, yeah, anything you want. So I said, ain't this the shit? So the bottom line, the connection to the to the Wu Tang 
36 Chambers was one floor above mine. It was on wow. 36th Street in New York, one floor above mine. So every wow. time I get in the elevator, there's Rizza, Jizza, Skizza, Lizza, Bizza, Dizza. You know, you know wow. so I was like, God damn. Damn. Yeah. So I was seeing them cats all the time. Now, fast forward my, my, my ODB story. I'm with this brother, and people in New York know him. Uh, when I got inducted into the Hip Hop Hall of Fame, he was there from mm. with my son. But this brother, yeah, this brother's huge. And since he was nine years old, I was teaching him martial arts and how to protect himself, how to stay away from alcohol and drugs and weed and all that shit. And uh, he was a little skinny kid. Now he's big. He's like, you know, solid. He lifts refrigerators and niggers. <laughs> He's just crazy. He says, I'm the president of the Chin Checkers Club. <laughs> He's the president of Chin Checkers of, of America. Uh, a glass jar. So anyway, we're, we're going some somewhere. I forget where. And we're in this parking lot. And, you know, I'm parking my car. Mm. An SUV full of cats rolls up. And it's ODB. And he, he goes up to ODB and he says, brother, I got a photographer who would like to take some pictures. He's fuck photographers and he's giving him a hard time. And ODB weighed like 150 pounds. Virgil weighs like 275 solid <laughs> like rock. Right. Nobody did that. And, you know, he knew who ODB was, so he gave him a pass. And I'm getting out of the car. And ODB said, oh, that's my Indian brother. That's my brother. He comes, he's hugging me and shit. And the other photographers around me, he's telling them, go, you know, do something with their mothers. And he comes up and he's hugging me. And we, you know, but that that's one of my dirty stories. And got a lot of dirty yeah. stories. But Yo, those, they're worth gold, brother. They mm. are all worth gold. Yeah, man. That, that, that I, I, I just love how. I just love how you're able, how, how like the these these artists, you know, people that you come in contact just like celebrate you and connect with you. Well, there's more to it. It's like I celebrate the human being mm. that transcended the bullshit that made them able to express their art in whatever form, whether it's graffiti, whether it's art, whether it's music, whether it's kicking ass, whatever, you know, whatever it is. Sex and women, whatever, whatever you all do, you know. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yes, sir. Long story. Hey, hey, it, it, it don't come real. It don't come real than you, Ernie. It really don't. It's like you, you're awesome. You're, you're, it, you're indigenous. Like, were you, well, you're born in Jersey, right? You're born in Jersey. I'm born in Brooklyn, man. Brooklyn, Brooklyn. Man, Brooklyn. Brooklyn. Sorry, I, I know. I yeah. But Brooklyn. But but you moved to Jersey when. I moved to Jersey when I got tired of being shot at by the, the, the drug dealers. Yeah, that's true. It is. <laughs> God damn. That's cold, man. And you see that's my name funny. underneath it, see? No doubt. Yo, so classic. Now, now that's man. just great gang. So if I wear that, people are just going to be like, yo, it's your world. <laughs> yeah. We're just in it. <laughs> I'm just a squirrel trying to get a nut. No, I, I came from Brooklyn, man. Oh, Brooklyn. Bruce, Bruce. Like like uh, Guru said, Brooklyn. Brooklyn, the planet. Somebody stinks in here. Man, Guru, come on. Jazz Metaxas yeah, is one of my favorite albums of all time. I love the Jazz Metaxas. And, and, and Liquid Swords. Because mm. there's so many layers and levels to Liquid Swords. And Method Man... If I just tell you my Method Man stories. Oh, man, we love Method Man, yo. No. Did, did you all watch The Wire, right? Yes, sir. Oh, yeah. Cheese? Cheese? Come on. Cheese was the most. Cheese? Cheese was the sleazy. When he got, when he got popped, I was happy. But uh. that's just the opposite of meth. Indeed. That's yep. just the opposite of cheese. And, you know, meth... I'll tell you a funny story about Matt. This is a story I think you'll appreciate. We're at the Apollo Theater on a Sunday morning, like 8 o'clock in the morning, and ours are, you know, all bloodshot and shit. 
And he's sitting there with a bunch of his uh, guys. And I walk up, I give him a dap, what's up? He said nothing much. And I give him my business card, which was Little Kim on a piano. Half what? Me. So, yeah, it's in the book. Okay. He takes the card, he goes like, he says, I don't want that shit, and he hands it back to me. I said, are you going to do like that, right? He says, yeah, I'm going to do like that. I said, you don't want my, you don't want my card? He said, hell no. And he opens up his card, he opens up his wallet, and right there where the, you ha usually have a picture of your woman, there was my business card. And we laughed. <laughs> so I was like, okay, you played that one. And then, <clears throat> the, you know, we're, we're in there, and it takes forever to get, it was showtime at the Apollo, it takes forever, you know, everybody. He says, man, let's go out in the back. It, it was cold, but it needed some air. So we go back there, and there's like 20 girls there, and they're all like 10, 11, 12. And oh. they're, they're all doing double Dutch because they're the double Dutch champions. Oh. And he says, can I, can I jump? And they look at him, and, you know, he's old. You know, they're all 10, so anybody, everybody's two or three times older. He, they said, yeah, come on. And he gets in, he's jumping. And they couldn't what? believe it. And their minds are blown. <laughs> and they said, where would you learn to jump? He said, my sister, you know, and and that was a true moment. And that's, I got pictures of him jumping rope with the double Dutch champion. What, it gets wow. better. The girls all want autographs because then we didn't have cell phones, but they all, so he says, I'll give you an autograph on one condition. They said, what? He said, I'll tell you later. So he signs all the little papers and he takes out a book from his bag. And he says, now nah, I need your autographs. And they all sign the autograph. Mm. And my yeah. mind just went. <laughs> yeah. And I yeah. got pictures of him. I got pictures of him with them little girls. So that's meant. Now, Man. I'll tell you a gangster story about Raekwon. I know Raekwon hides up in Toronto. Yep. <laughs> Yo. Shout Raekwon, out to Penny. Well, Raekwon is on his bus. And we're with the group called the uh, Killer Army. We oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Down, down yeah, yeah. yeah. And I go on, I go on the uh, tour bus, and he got like 50 dudes there, just got out of jail, you know, with the guide bodies. And he said, what do you want? I said, just come to give you a dap. I don't want nothing. Why I got to want something? He said, you know, you know how we do it. So all these cats are throwing money on the floor and doing push-ups because they just got out of jail. And, I, you know, so I said, damn, that's a lot of money. I said, can I get in? And they, you old motherfucker, you fat, this and that. I was like, what? I said, you talk a lot of shit, put your money down. So I take out a hundred bucks, put it in the pile. And I said, let's do this. Yes, you know? Ernie. Let's do this. Yeah, you've let's been in the it. Navy. Yeah, I was in the Navy and I was in martial arts and I was boxing. And and push-ups ain't, ain't like no other exercise. Mm. You got to know how to move. You got to know how to, you know. Breathe, you yeah. gotta know how to breathe, and plus, I don't smoke, I don't drink, and these cats are always, you know, got right. shit in the in the fire in their mouth. So, oh fuck you, nigga, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know all that shit. So I said, yeah, the talking shit is easy. Just, just let's do the count. <laughs> okay, I take his money. We we'll do it again. The next one. How about me? Put more money down to put all the money, and this guy's, you know. Be solid. And all of a sudden, I feel a foot, a Timberland on my back pushing me down. So I said, and I turn around, and it's Ray Kwan. And he goes over, and he picks up the money, and he hands it to me. He says, now get the fuck off my bus before I kick your ass. I said, why do you do that? Let me. He said, no. He said, because you're going to catch a heart attack, and they're going to say we killed you. Now get the fuck out of here. Take oh. your money. And I took off. <laughs> no, nah, man. Nah, punk. <laughs> You know, and, and they were mad. I said, well, you know, uh, you're mad, but my pockets are swollen, so that's okay. Uh, and, uh, and Ray gives me a dot, and we laughed. 
<laughs> oh shit! Yo, yo. Shout out, shout out to the Wu Tang man. Wu Tang shout out Ray Kwan and the Wu Tang Matt I mean, ODD. Another day, another day. We're doing, we're doing the Bobby Digital video, uh, in Upper Manhattan. It wasn't actually Harlem, but the projects. And I park my vehicle and I go over to them. I give them a dap, and all the brothers are there, and. A bunch of cats I don't know just got out of jail. You know, everybody's fit. And these white boys walk up. They look like, you know, typical uh, TV type cats, you know, groomed hair, nice clothes, you know, the, they didn't look like us. Mm. And they walk up, and one of them grabs one of the dudes, and the other one handcuffs him. And we say, What the fuck is this? And they put their heads. And they had two guys there for federal warrants. And me Whoa. and Rizzo, Rizzo was pissed because what they did, they were slick enough to find out where their video was and come up and bust it. Mm. Yeah. And I got pissed with the cat busting it. But Rizzo was mm. pissed, really pissed. And Meth was pissed. You God was there. And for my opinion, maybe I'm wrong, but you God got the best voice in the Wu Tang. Yo, you, you, amazing voice. Mm. Yeah. Holding on. Amazing. He has, he has the best voice. Bro, I'm going to give it to you with no trivia. Bro, like cocaine <laughs> straight from Bolivia. <laughs> Crack. <laughs> Yo. Hey. Yeah, man. Well, we're kind of coming towards the end of our, of our program today. But, yo, man, dropping... So many gems for us, man. So many, man. Yes, man. Yep. ODB, man. God bless. Oh. All right, I, I, love, I loved his names. I loved his names. He, he, baby Jesus. Old Dirty <laughs> Bastard. Uh, yeah. Osiris. Osiris. Yeah. Osiris. Rusty. I yeah. I don't, I don't even remember all the names, but I was like. Big oh, baby bro. Jesus. I know this is not a formal interview. I know you'd rather interview me and ask me, you know. Yeah. No, no, we're, we're, no, 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 no. We're having a conversation. We, share, we, we share in time. That's that's it. We share in that's time together. That just another memory together. It's a blessing. It's I just a blessing. The first time you you did come and interview me, uh, you asked me a bunch of questions, logic, uh, and you said, you know, what the stolen from Africa mean to you? And yeah. I said everything's been stolen from Africa: mathematics, science, history, mm. religion culture even martial arts and if you look at a lot of the indigenous people of the philippines and, and china you look at buddha look at his hair come on now okay don't he, his hair looks like yours come on man don't don't get me started mm. Right? Mm. thank you brother thank you Yo. thank you ernie ernie would you be open to doing another interview closer to the summer we want to we want to talk huh <laughs> you got money? Oh shit! <laughs> we we working on that. We working on that. Brother, <laughs> you deserve. Brother, I mean, that's the me, thing. This me. shit is listen, priceless. This shit brother, is priceless. Listen to me. Listen to me. It's currency, and the currency. I need currency for what I do, and the currency that you've always shown me is love, respect, and brotherhood. That's mm. the currency. Money, mm. anybody can have money. A monkey could give a monkey, you know, come on, man. Mm. Or if I talk to you about paying me, it's it's in a different currency. That's where we will never lose, you see. We will never fail because we understand the difference. Some people have a car and they say, oh, it's worth this much. They know the price. They don't know the value. The difference between us and them is we know the value of everything. Mm. They know the price of everything. Mm. Yeah, you can know the price is right and learn the price. But Amen. it's when you understand the value. Wow. When you understand the value that you become wealthy. I could go places where the police can't go. Mm -hmm. Yep. Facts. And, you know, I can go where people with, with AK-47s can't go. I just mm -hmm. walk in and they embrace me. These other cats, they need warrants and you know it's <laughs> about it's about value. We know the value of stuff. Yes, mm -hmm. you can have me back, of course. 
Mm. You know, it's like you shouldn't mm. even have to ask, man. And that oh, book man. Pop at the end of the world, I did that just to, you know, because people people talk and they say, oh, Ernie, you know, you kind of old, or you kind of this, or you kind of slow. I'm like, mm, all right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put this jewel out there and see if it, it doesn't, you know, show you how it's supposed to be done. And make sure you read the poem at the end. I'm I'm definitely going to spend some time on that, man. And like I said, man, um, you mentioned that you you have like um a few copies left of the Who Shot. Oh, you have the Who Shot you? Someone oh, I stole got the Who Shot you. I someone got stole my copy, man. It was signed. I got it in Toronto when Ernie was here. I got it signed. Oh, someone shit. stole it. I hope they enjoy it wherever it's at. But I'm going to get my my uh, my copy back, man. So Ernie, let me let me tell you let me tell you a story. I was in Ohio, and I was doing. Uh, a workshop or a lecture, I don't know. You know, they have me traveling all over the place. I'm in Ohio and this woman comes up to me and they, you know, all the hip hop people that are I'm signing who shots or who shots. And and this woman comes up, she's a white woman with pearls and, and a nice business suit. And you know, she's clean. I'm like, what the fuck is this? So, you know, she <laughs> said, uh, Mr. Panicoli, I said, you can call me Ernie. What's up? She said, I'm the uh head librarian for the city in Ohio. I said, nice meeting you. She said, yeah. She said, your book is fantastic. I said, thank you. She mm -hmm. said, it's the most stolen book in our library. Wow. And this, way, this white guy, tall white guy, what gray hair, gray suit, gray tie, he comes up and he's looking at her and he asks her, you know who I am? She says, no. He said, I'm your boss. I'm in charge of the state of Ohio. Wow. She said, oh, yeah, Mr. Jackson or whatever. So, you know, he says, you are correct that this was the most stolen book in your part of Ohio. He says, but it's also the most stolen book in the state of Ohio. Oh, my. <laughs> so he says to me, he says, he says, I know that's not exactly an accolade, he said, but there's nobody steals Shakespeare. Nobody steals, you know, he started naming all the people they don't steal. He says, so I guess in a way it's a tribute to your work that people steal it. So, Neil, mm. you know, they stole your <laughs> shit, you know. And uh, I, I remember uh, Puffy had it on his uh, coffee table and he had a drawer underneath, you know, one of the doors that opened. Right. And, he said, you know what's in there? I said, what? He said, five more copies of when these books <laughs> yeah, put one. Right? Yeah. yeah. Oh, oh, man. man. Yo, man. yo, man. Wow. Wow. That's incredible. Thank you. Thank you. Yo. Well, I was actually going to say, like, I was gonna say, like, before before we go, you know, because um, you know, with, with our, our brother, you know, like DMX, man, I, I wanted to see, like, what, what is a, what, what is something you want, would want or how are you remembering DMX? How do I remember DMX? Like this. Just a real brother. Mm. Who didn't know me, but knew my vibe and recognized. And just like Flav, and if you look, the, the, the World Trade Center is behind Flav, and the World Trade Center is gone, and Flav mm. is still there. So wow. uh, there's so much I could share with you, man. There's so much you, right there. Man, you, you got, got part so two, many, man. Don't you worry. All right, Ernie, but uh so we want to big you up again before your next book comes out. Because okay. we, we 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 got that currency of love for you as long forever. That's it, this is just well, life. We're family. This, so you don't know so what this is like. You don't know what this is like to me. Uh you're I see a beautiful girl there. How yeah, dare you? Exactly. Yeah. Hello. <laughs> how come? How come you got something on green on your tongue? What you been doing? He's like eating yeah. candy or something, man. Don't, yeah. don't worry, I'm, I'm gonna deal with her afterwards, man. Oh, no, that's okay. Let her be. She had some beauty to this. Yeah, um, yeah. They closed the border with uh, the United States, so we can't even go to Canada. But yeah. they did it. No, no, no. They did it to save lives. Mm -hmm. And they did it because, hey, you got a lot of peckerheads who decide that a mask is somehow 
uh, taking away your rights. Well, mm. being on a ventilator takes away your rights also. Mm. And, and dying takes away your rights. Mm. So, you know, we're going to put that on hold. Uh, this this is like, you know, you guys bringing me back to T-Dot, T man. I'm, I'm great. Mm. T-Dot, yep. And, hey, uh, man. You know, you know it's a second. You know it's a second home for you. You know it. Know, we, you got know. you. You got family, friends, brothers, and sisters out here. You know that. So whenever we can all do that in the world, we're gonna do this in person and not online. So Trust that's me. just how it is. We, Trust you know, me. when your book, when your what's the the name of your third book? Did you name it yet? Uh, yeah, I did name it. Okay. Do you want to share it? Uh, right. I don't know. Uh, it's up to you. It's up to you. I showed you. I showed you some images from the book at the beginning. Yeah, True. we know we 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 got blessed with the exclusives. I don't know if you mm. want to drop the name yet. Oh shit! It's Slick Rick and Dougie Fresh on the cover. No, that's is that the back? Flash. Oh, that's Flash. Sorry, I can't. Oh, okay, wow. Slick Rick and Flash. Beautiful. And history, man. Wow, Salt on. Pepper and Salt Spinderella. Pepper. Wow, James Todd Smith. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. Yes. Genius. 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 Before wow. Jizza. <laughs> Genius. Wow, Clifford Smith, the Method yeah. Man. Oh my God. M E T H O D. Right. Shout out to Yo, Meth, man, because like, he, he he always uh, you know supports Stolen from Africa as well, man. They're real, real good peoples, yeah. man. So, so big up, big up Meth, man. Yo, for real. Yo, we 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 celebrating that new book because uh, we're getting it. We're I, that money ain't an object, brother. We getting that third book. More pictures. It's history, pictures, man. Smalls. Wait a minute. Come on. What? Wait, whoa, 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 whoa. Show that again. No one, is, no oh, one has ever on. seen that. No one has ever seen it. I've never seen that. That's Biggie and Tupac together. Biggie and Jay Z there. Oh wow. my god. Whoa! Wow! Yo, wow! This is, whoa. Uh, yes. Christopher Rios. Wow. Ooh. Joseph Cartagena. Fat Joe. Oh, see, this is beyond value. This is priceless. Man. Come on. This is gold. Wow. You you got you got stuff that money can't even dream to be, man. Mm. This is wow, man. Man, Yo, Earth, now, wait a second. You think each set of brothers in here. I put together for a reason each set of sisters. You think these two go together? Wow. Oh, come on, and, man. Of uh, course. Uh, imagine it. Imagine if they made a song together. Rock him and Chuck D. Wow. Wow. Well, brother, no, Ernie, I'm working on it. Anyhow. So, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Name, infinite thank you. The name of the book. There's only one cat that could do name a book that hip hop's third eye. Yes. <laughs> yes. Ooh, yes. That's as what Eric you Sherman are. Said, as Eric Sermon said, all the rest of you get the Bozak. <laughs> <laughs> Man. The uh Man. Yeah. Amen. And, and, we're working with LL Cool J and Rock the Bells, who, who want to promote the book, and uh, we're going to be doing merchandising with Rock the Bells because they have this idea that I'm an icon, and they don't want to see their icons get going hungry, or you know having mm. to get uh, leftovers. You know, please, uh, please. You know, and they they have this feeling that you've contributed too much, Ernie, we want to support you. Oh my God. Honestly, that is beautiful to hear, man. And I'm so glad that we're, you know, we're able to give you your, your flowers, you know, your recognition. Because when, when I when I look at this book, like this is something I'll be sharing with my kids. You know what I mean? This is like a, 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 you know, a history document, like historic documents, you know, that I'll be able to share and even pass on to them as well, you know? So I want to thank you for like your extensive work in capturing like our, our culture, our history. If you go to lulu.com, lulu.com, okay. uh, they have my punk life there. They have a book I did on graffiti people don't know about. Uh, there's a bunch of stuff there. And those books that I self-published, and uh, I, I think they're relevant, but people don't know about them, which is okay. 
Mm. Because I ain't never been about, you know, selling. I just keep doing what I do, man. That's yeah. it, man. And you're you're immortalized. You're infinite. Yeah, you are loved. You are cherished. You are appreciated mm. by the realest of the real in hip hop culture. Anybody who really knows the culture, you've probably got their picture, and they probably love you for it. Because I know that we do. So, man, yeah. Is that Sister Soldier? Sister Soldier. Yeah. Sister Soldier. Sister. Sister. Yep, oh. Yep. Sister Soldier. Oh. Oh. Oh man. Mm -hmm. Damn, yo. Man. Terminator X. Play Honor, play, Chuck. Wow. Classic. Man, well, I'm, I'm, yep. I'm going to put in my, my request for that book, you know, from, from now. <laughs> I need the whole collection, man. I need the Trinity. Yes. Yeah, man. Such such classic photos. Just the most Public classic. Enemy. That that was my introduction to hip hop, man. Through through my pops, yo, I used to play like you no know, Public Enemy all the time, and it takes a nation of millions to hold us back, man. That was that was the see, album. Man. Yeah, I'm going to share a picture with you, which I think is one of my most profound pictures, and it happened in Harlem when they shut down Harlem because Nelson Mandela came to town, and uh, Chuck D called me and. This is one of my favorite pictures of all time. Chuck and Flav. Wow. On 125th Street in Harlem. Wow. Mm. Wow. That looks like it's like 89. Like, fight the yeah. power. Yeah, something. I don't know. Uh, 87. Oh, shit, man. The energy, man, that's captured, man. Oh. Yeah, yo. The essence of hip hop is you learning. Right. You 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 capture it in your eye and your pictures, and you embody it in your life. So yeah, thank man. you. And we, gonna, we, we, we okay. Well, what, 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 yeah. <laughs> Yo, quickly, quickly, uh, the um, uh, we got some Kimene, Robin, uh, Robin Bryce, Sandra Jordan, and I am. They're just giving you shout outs. They're, you you got yeah. mad shout outs in the comments from, from other lovers beside us. Tell, so. them, tell, them, tell them that when this uh, Canada opens back up to get me up there, and I'll do a, a workshop, a presentation. Yes, and please, man. You want to oh. see, see the blackest picture you've ever seen of Public Enemy? Okay, let's do it. With the S was the. Oh, shit. Yo, Jeez. that's a million dollars, yo. That's wow. just a million dollars. Mm, mm. Chuck, Flavor, wow. Terminator X, classic wow. Terminator X. Look at those wow. glasses and the flat top. The oh, energy's Flavor, crazy Flavor the, in that shot. With the clock, Flavor with the clock era, classic. Man. man. Ernie, that's that shit is I, currency, I want, man. I want, I want to leave with a message for everybody and trust me here's the biggest clock you're ever going to see with Flav in his life <laughs> you know what time uh, it is come uh, on no? <laughs> you know what time here's, it is here's, Flav here's, knows a what time it is. here's a picture yo that was my first concert too Logic Public Enemy was my first right, show right, ever right right Yes, that's yeah, that, that that's almost like your picture of yeah. Ice Cube uh, strangling the Statue of Liberty. Yeah, yeah, man. <laughs> yeah, I'm okay. The uh, just telling people that it's been a while since I've been home, and to get a nice venue when this pandemic is over, and to invite me up, and show me love and yeah. have me back up there because T Dot is my second home and Man, for a lot of reasons I miss it and you know a whole bunch of stuff mine done that we ain't even gonna go into. Yeah, but, uh, yo fam, I, I remember some of the stuff man, but yo, you know you got love, you got you got hearts, you got family here. 
And we got another reason to celebrate you. We, we don't need reasons. We just do it because we love it. But you got a yeah. new book coming out. So when your new book drops, we going to get you up here and do something to celebrate that's it. it. Yeah. I, I need it. We, if the people need it. That's it. There's, it's just that's it's the it. best. It's the best book I've ever done in my life. And it's a book. Wow. That, <laughs> it's a book that I spent the entire year of pandemic working on. And uh. it's a book where there's mathematics. Like you got Chuck D and Rock Kim, mm. you know, Biggie and Tupac. Yes, everything is balanced. There's no wow. miscellaneous pictures. Everything. So, um, mm. we we may make the first book uh, with a leather bound cover or or something like that, and do do some uh, you know high high money ones just to keep my rent paid. Hey. To keep me from having to jack people. <laughs> the, uh, the, uh, you know, we we may do a limited edition of a hundred signed with leather jackets, uh, you know, leather. Oh, covers, or, come on! Know, with a eight by ten or something, uh, in there, uh, we're thinking out the box. Also, without giving away too much, I'm working with two groups of people uh, who are trying to get me paid finally. You know, it's hard being 74, and, you know, Man. contributing yeah. for, for 45 years. And, you know, so I got a couple of groups of people and I got that I can't talk about. We're okay. working on a project, but we're also uh, – Rock the Bells is very much, LL Cool J called me, spoke to me for an hour, hour and a half. He wants me to be one of the faces of Rock the Bells, one of the icons. And, yes, you know, my thing with him is we've known each other for 30 years. And he's always been respectful to me. I've always been respectful to him. He's mm. seen me work and, and like me, he's never drunk and on. He's always being progressive. And that's what I do. And, uh, you know, your reputation speaks for you. So your homework mm -hmm. tonight is to look up Akala, look up John Trudell, and yep. trust me, John and William Kunstler. William yep. Kunstler. But each of them, their, their stories, their sagas are going to open up new pathways in your head for how to think and how to look at life. And my message to all you young artists, I don't care if you're a rapper or dancer or one store, or, mm. you know, whatever, whatever your vocation is, you know, yes, it's to do it with love and do it with as much energy as possible. And remember mm. something I've been all over this world, man. I have never seen two people that are exactly the same. Mm. And mm -hmm. you know, uh. I have a friend who's a, a porn star, and he told me so. I said, how do, you, how do you get excited by all these women? And I'll never forget what he said, and it's something that we can all take with us, yeah. way beyond male and female. He said, everybody has something beautiful about them. He said, yeah. focus on that. He said, mm. let that excite you. And that blew my mind, because I do the same thing with a camera. Right. Right. You know, everybody, women, when I had my studio, women were, were like 50 deep trying to get into my studio. And it's not because I made them look pretty. They were already pretty. It's not because I made them look beautiful. It's because I saw something in them. Mm. And they recognized that which I saw in them. Mm. There's there's a cat. Uh, I don't know if you, you watch Netflix. There's a cat uh, in uh, this TV show called Bridgerton. Okay, yeah, I've seen a couple a, episodes. A black, a black duke. The black duke, yeah, yeah. yeah. His right. name is uh, Rene. Reggae Jean. Yeah, Reggae Jean. Yeah. And women all over the world are, are, you know, getting crazy about this cat. Well, guess what? Guess who had him in the studio for a whole day, twenty years ago? I got pictures what? of this cat when he was twenty years old. Come and on. He's in bed with a girl with, you know. And they're all doing, yeah, yeah. Wow. And I just found these pictures, so I was like, okay. Whoa. So I sent them to Europe, hoping they can. But this cat was smooth, man. 
he's in a room with 30 models, you know, 15 guys, 15 girls, and ain't nobody looking at none of the, the guys. The girls are all looking at him. A few of the guys are looking at him. But, uh, you know, I have Reggae Jean in my studio. Amazing. Wow. Yeah, that's you Ooh. got history, history on history yeah. on history. The levels of history you got, Man. you got history. What you do, do what you love, and if someone goes this far, you have to go that far. And mm. if if someone gets this deep into art, you got to get deeper, and you got to understand that there's God and magic in everything. Yes, <laughs> yes, everything. Yes, you I have love that you said that. It's the truth. You. I don't have to tell you what you're going to learn from her. the magic, the beauty, the, the humor. Mm -hmm. you know, I, I have my little nephew here. He's two years old. He was blowing my mind. And, you know, just the way he would ask a question makes me stop mm -hmm. and again and again and damn. So everything has God in it. Everything has magic in it. Mm -hmm. and like I said, forget the cost of anything. Look at the value of something. Yeah. Yeah. The first time I heard What's Going On by Marvin Gaye or, or My Favorite Things by John Coltrane, that changed my life. Mm -hmm. The first time I heard of color, the first time I heard of mm -hmm. it's just certain things that penetrate into an area where your spirit resides. Mm. I forget that. We get caught up in the physical. That's it, man. Man, yes. thank you. Thank you, Ernie. Thank you, thank you, thank you. From from DMX to Big Pun to Aaliyah to Biggie to Tupac to ODB to every Ooh. memory you shared with us, they're mm. all alive because you keep their visions alive, their spirits are alive, their stories mm. alive, their jokes. Yeah, little kids like that need that. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, so... What are you eating? <laughs> yes. 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 Peace, man. All right. All right, Ernie. We want to celebrate you when that, right before or when Hip Hop's Third Eye comes out. So well, you, guys keep, you guys keep in touch with me. And uh, thank Done. you both for what you do. And try to save your city because I know the last time I was up there in 2019, your homicide rate was equal to New York City. That's crazy. Yes, yes. And these are not apocalypse zombies, zombie apocalypses. These are not people from other planets. This is not the, uh, you know, some some mystical cult. These are our brothers and sisters, man. We got to, mm. you know, calm that BS down. You know, yeah. like, like, you know, we got to teach them, man. We came here together. Have you forgotten that once we were brought here, we were robbed of our name, robbed of our robbed culture, of our culture, our religion, our culture, our culture, culture, our God. And, and many act, of us, by the way we act, we've, we've lost, lost our, our mind. mind. Yeah, that's, we have to reach out to them. And, and nobody, I don't care how, nobody, nobody can be overlooked. Mm. I remember as a kid, they said, God don't make no junk. Wow. Right? So if you if you have the attitude that God don't make no junk, you know, and you bring that into everything, then, then, then this aura, this energy, this magic surrounds you and people recognize that. Oh, man. You know, so carry that. Man, okay. thank you, brother. Thank you, Ernie. Please thank you. Me. We will. Thank you for reminiscing with us, the past, the present, the future. Thank you for all your lessons and stories. Mm. Thank you for mm. thank you for walking the walk and talking the yeah. talk. Thank you for being all the truth that you actually give. Thank I you for not people, being I like that means T dot. It's been a minute, but I love you and I miss you. And I look forward to breaking bread with you. And I look forward to, you know, just T Dot is special, man. It's the first place I've owned in Canada, and it's also uh, has a lot of levels and layers of magic. Indeed. Yeah. A lot of, a lot of Native brothers out here. 
yo, you, 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 the door is open. We got love for you here forever. So whenever you know, it can happen, we are, we will all put together and make to, it happen. You might have to sneak me into the country. Right. You know, <laughs> like an illegal alien, you know, like, <laughs> as though yeah, man. it's illegal or an alien. But, um, yeah, man. We'll oh, we'll, we'll, we'll just take the the, the uh, border on on Maine by by Maine instead of like okay. Buffalo or something. <laughs> Listen, real quick. Uh, June thirtieth. Keep that in mind because June not 30th. only is my book coming out around that time, but also the United States government by law has to decode and declassify all of their information about uh, our brothers in the in the galaxy. They have to put that information out. That was part amazing. Of the deal. That was part wow. of the deal with getting Biden in and uh, the, that rear mouth out. And uh, uh, the end of June, all of the government agencies have to open up all their vaults and put that information out there. And uh, a lot of people are not talking about it. They're talking about this, that, and the third. But it's going to have uh, altering. Uh, Part of me, a mind bending effect when certain people now find out that we're not only not alone, but you know, that they're guiding our destiny. Just a whole. So look, wow. look mm -hmm. towards the end of June. And okay. Okay. Once, the United States, once the United States releases their information, it's going to start spreading around the world. So a lot of those secret clandestine things that none of us need to know. <laughs> we already know. Right. Anybody right. I know that True. knows, knows. So uh, we don't need to know, but there are people that it, it will affect the uh, the energy. Okay. Okay. June so 30th. Until Thank June 30th, you. we will carry the love, we'll reminisce, celebrate hip-hop at the end of the world. Who shot you? Ernie, you're Man, we just gonna keep doing what we do. So such a blessing, man. Thank you. Yes, man. Shout out to everyone, man, who came through, man. You know what I mean? Today, man, this was just incredible. Like, I, man, like I'm just so speechless of like the gems that were shared. You know, we started off simple and then just expanded, yo. So, so big up to to brother Ernie, man, for for always blessing us. Big up to everybody who's who's come through, you know, to reminisce for it with us. <laughs> yes. You know I me mean? every Take Tuesday, up. man, live, man, 7 p.m. man, as we reminisce, man. So and as we reminisce, we got more week. in the future. See you next week, everyone. You already know. See you next week. Thanks, Belino. <laughs> Mark, everybody who's watching. Kwame, everybody, Sandy. Thank you, everybody who watches. We're gonna see you next week. Indeed, man. Peace, y'all.